So, I hope you ate your coffee. <laughs> Probably have eaten at least 30 cups by now. But you know, life handed me some time bombs instead of lemons. And I ain't a bomb expert. Yep, they exploded. <laughs> Roll the explo- I, I mean intro. So, with the charm of my exploded face, I am back to teach you guys how to shoot faster with that wimpy APS we made last time. Now, before we get into it, there's an untold rule to the APS, the Daka Triangle. Daka 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 there are three points, firing speed, small size, and destructive power. If you want a fast firing, powerful cannon, it will be huge. Similarly, if you want a small but powerful cannon, it won't be firing as fast. And a small fast cannon will just tickle the enemy, it won't do much either. So finding the balance for a cannon you want is very very important. Now we have learned how to make a cannon in the last episode but we still don't know how it works. So as you guys can see here I have set up a 500 millimeter cannon here and as you can see it shoots a shell from the first autoloader then from the next one and from the next one and the cycle continues until all of the autoloaders have been fired and it reaches back to the first one. So to have a continuous rate of fire by the time it has shot from the last loader, the first one has to have reloaded. So how do we achieve this you ask? Either by restricting the fire rate or by adding more autoloaders. We'll look into that later. Because we are gonna look into a little mathematics now. No, 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 don't run away, I promise. I made it super understandable and you don't need to be a Rick and Morty fan for this. Kill me. Kill me. <laughs> now, we will look to an attached autoloader which will bombard you with some info. We need to focus on is the loading speed modifier in here. This modifier is determined by these three things multiple clips with shells loaded, number of total autoloaders and the autoloader length multiplier. What are these three horsemen of shell loading speeds? Let's have a look. Multiple clips with shells loaded means the more clips you have attached to an autoloader, the faster it will be in reloading. Note that the clips actually need to have shells in them for this to work. With one clips, the modifier is 1. With 2, it's 0 0.71. With 3, it's 0.58. With 4, it's 0.5. And with 5, it's 0.45. Note that the fifth clip is very, very weird and it's not intended by the devs, I think. It was just a designing mistake, maybe. So, as you can see, the more clips, the better, but more than three clips is not worth it because of the heavy diminishing returns as you can notice from three to four you go from 0.58 to 0.5 which is in my opinion not really worth it also note that no matter how long your clips are they are still considered a single clip and will provide only one modifier then the second horseman the number of autoloader is Dude, dude, it's, it's, it's in the name, for God's sake. The more autoloaders strapped to your cannon, the higher this will be. So lower the autoloaders, faster they will be. This surprisingly does not have diminishing return. That means that the more autoloaders you add, the worse the loading time of each autoloader will get. But then this is kind of situational to what your cannon is going to be. The third one. The autoloader length multiplier. Bigger the size of the autoloader, smaller this will be, hence 
bigger auto loaders are given a speed boost but then they have inherently longer load time so it balances out the one meter ones have multiplier of one two meters 0.71 three meters 0.58 four meters 0.5 and six meter 0.41 8 meters 0.35 this has diminishing returns too but it is worth it because bigger shells are deadlier of course it is 8 meter shells that's basically a traffic pole being lobbed at you now you guys might be asking Darko what do I do with these numbers they don't make any sense well suddenly they will make sense first Let's get the barrel cooldown out of the way. As we know, no matter how fast our reload is, if the barrel can't cool down fast enough, it won't be firing. Of course, you can bypass this by overclocking the cannon, but only do that if you want to miss the target even at point blank range. We'll first count the number of autoloaders in our cannon. In my case, it's 10. Then you may notice I have built this cannon so that all the autoloaders have the same amount of ammo clips for the simplicity's sake. Now, if you look at the autoloaders and multiply all these three values, you get the final load modifier and all the autoloaders in this cannon have the same modifier because I made them the same. Now for the shells you will be firing, let's get into the shell customizer. We will note down these two values. Expected reload time from clip into the autoloader and time to pass shells into the clip. Now, let's multiply the loading speed modifier that is 0.63 in our case with the expected reload time from the clip that is 44.31 and we will get 27.91. So it's going to take 27.91, let's round that up 28 seconds for simplicity. 28 seconds for the shell from the clips to go inside the autoloader at which point it can be shot at any point provided that the clips actually have shells for the first modifier now if we go ahead and divide 60 seconds by 28 we will get 2.14 per minute fire rate but that's only for this one autoloader but we have 10 autoloaders in our cannon so we will multiply the 2.14 by 10 which will give us 21.4 hence the cannon can fire 21.4 let's round that up again 21 rounds per minute for having a continuous fire rate let's see that and we will try shooting it with the 21 rounds per minute firing rate And as you can see, the one minute mark has passed and we are still shooting at consistent fire rates. Now, you can make this cannon burst fire too by setting your fire rate higher. Let's try that. I'll set it to 105 so it shoots 5 times faster. It will shoot those 10 shells fast. Then we'll wait the exact 22 seconds to fire again. You can make it spew all the shells at once, then wait 22 seconds by not limiting the firing speed at all. Since you know, we have the cooldown to handle that. 
But dark cow, I want faster cannons. Twenty-one shells per minute is nothing. All right, let's use thirty belt feds. Lower the gauge to one fifty on the same cannon by six stapling. Six stapling. Oh, that's that's actually a word. Wow, by six stapling the number of barrels. As you can see, the belt feds don't have multiple clips attached to modifier. Instead. They replace that with this ridiculous 0.2 innate modifier. So expected reload time from clip 6.31 multiplied with loader modifier 0.46. Well, we got a fire rate of 600 per minute. Happy now? Note that here I calculated without the decimals and it can shoot a little faster than 600 as the last three autoloaders weren't used all that much because the first autoloader would reload before it completed the cycle through the autoloaders. Note that Belfeds again cannot reload shells into the clip while they are firing. So yeah, that's a trade-off. But dark out, these shoot french fries. Mm. Oh, french fries. Mm. Damn, I'm hungry now. <laughs> so, you wanna shoot big shells at high fire rates, huh? Be ready to make an entire boat just to support your cannon. <laughs> Behold the face shredder 9000. A fire rate of 129 shells, literally the size of a big electric pole. <laughs> <laughs> Shows for days. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm out of my darker phase. Something that I missed in the last episodes are ammo ejectors. So how do ammo ejectors work? They basically connect to your auto loader, and whenever the clips connected to that autoloader or the autoloader itself are destroyed the ammo gets ejected through the ammo ejector so they don't blow up inside your ship if you didn't have those ammo ejectors they would just blow up and make big cavities in your ship and you don't really want that do you but then it's not always practical to have an ammo ejector peeping out your ship ejecting ammo out your ship because it just makes it vulnerable. There is no armoring for that ammo ejector. So we can bypass that by adding an emergency ejection fuse to your shells. What this does is instead of ejecting the ammo, it actually deletes the ammo. So it doesn't blow up, it doesn't throw anywhere, it just straight up deletes the ammo. So yeah, there are a lot of ways you can build the cannon, make it less vulnerable and whatnot with this thing. Another thing that I also forgot was the recoil absorbers. Every gun have a certain amount of recoil based on how fast it is firing and how much recoil each shell produces. So if you don't have any recoil absorption, you'll just roll over your craft and <laughs> you'll probably end up upside down. So recoil absorbers are a great way to fix that. Or you can fix that with very sensitive PID, whatever your heart desires. You have options, a lot of options in this game. And with that, I think you guys have become quite good at making an APS, at least the powerful and optimized part. Now all that remains is to Tetris the cannons better and fitting them in a turret. But I do think all the numbers we talked about in this episode need some time to settle in and we can leave the Tetrising part to the next episode. Remember, you can keep watching episodes after episodes and you won't learn anything if you don't build anything yourself. So, if you paid attention today, we learned that expected time to load from a clip divided by loading speed modifier equals fire rate in shells per minute for one autoloader. Fire rate per autoloader multiplied by number of autoloader is equal to consistent fire rate. This episode was written, voiced, and edited by me, Dark Yaunova. Special thanks to Mady83 and Normal69 for helping me out with the script. If you guys want to learn more, interact with like-minded people, or just want to play some games with other people, we have a good Discord community. Links will be in the description. 
Hopefully you guys learned something from this video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like. Until then, grab some coffee, chew the hell out of them and I will see you guys in the next one.